Hello, hello, my dear crafters. Here I am again with my socks and another little tutorial about this beautiful, lovely heel. This heel we call French heel or horseshoe heel. I think it's because of the shape. I think in English it's something like a flop and gusset heel, but I can't be sure. Then uh, I am doing my... Uh, leftover socks as you see and I make them on two pairs of needles because when I do magic loop I like to put my cable like this you know perpendicular that's why I'm not using that method when you need both socks on a one pair of circular needles but this is my way you can uh, do whatever you like here I have two socks and uh, one of my heels is already ready and today we will do another heel this heel is looking like this, very nice and beautiful. This is the um, how it looks on the side and very, very nice and comfortable. And today I will share with you all my secret, all little uh, detail about how to make this heel and anybody can make it after this video, I promise you, even if you are, are the beginner. You can you will be able to make this lovely and beautiful like hill then let me take uh, this sock out and we will work on this another one i will not stop on this video on all this part of beginning because you can watch it in my in other videos i used here the uh, german twisted cast on for this sock and after this i've done uh, 20 rounds of rib stitch two by two uh, usually i i do from 20 to 25 rounds for ribbon and this is my ribbon for this sock because i wanted to use more leftovers then i've done 20 on this one but you can use any size you like i like from 20 to 25 and another thing i wanted to show you here how i change my colors after ribbon for you to have nice change of colors just make one more round in knit stitches this one and then when you do this you have very nice and very smooth and uh, flawless change of the colors if you change a new color do it on a second row after rib stitch and first ribs uh, first uh, round you will do in knit stitches and then you change color this my leg is a just ordinary stockinette leg and I have my marker here as you see and 20 rounds I put my markers usually to put to 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 have count and to have my socks as similar here I have some um, more rounds I'm just uh, not counting because I'm orienting for my leftovers and uh, this is all up to you all this uh, round you can do a bigger size a longer calf and longer leg and this is uh, you start like ordinary sock i will not stop on it on this video because i will focus on this video on the heel then for the heel i use it uh, my first needle i always do my heel on the first needle and then i take the number of the stitches on my first needle and this sock is 28 because my sock is 56 stitches then half of it is 28 stitches on my first needle then i'm knitting in a contrasting color for 28 rounds and this is for the contrasting color heel because if you do normal french heel it will be a little bit different here i just join a contrasting color i leave the tail because i will hide it later and i do in plain knitting just going uh, on a stop knitting in rounds and i go uh, there and back there and back in plain knitting like this and i do it for 28 rows but this is not the rule you can always use less or more it's depending how you like your heel for this video i will use these uh, numbers because it's easier to remember and it's easy to understand then you do your flop uh, on um, in 28 uh, rows this will be flop of your heel and if you turn it on your left hand side this left side you see you turn and you will have your 
edge stitches need to be half of your uh, number of your rows it will be 14 edge stitches on the left hand side and don't forget it is for my sock of 56 stitches you can have other numbers but i want you to understand the principle next step we need to divide the stitches of the flap and it will be three sections but for th these three sections will not be the same we need to divide the quantity of our stitches in five but my 28 stitches yeah, i can divide in five then i will round it to the 30 30 i divide at five and it's six stitches why five because one session will be in the in the middle and two sections will be on each of the sides and another important thing on my sides i need to have a odd number of stitches then sometimes i like to leave just four stitches in the middle but if i uh, take four stitches from 28 i have 24 stitches and if i divide it in two sections for my sides it will be 12 stitches and it will be even number i need to have odd numbers then for this uh, this gusset i will leave six stitches in the middle and then 28 minus 6 is 22 stitches when I divide it in two, I have 11 stitches on this side and 11 stitches on the left side and six stitches in the middle. That's how I will divide my stitches for this particular uh, uh, flower, flower, uh, gusset, sorry, gusset. Then if you have another quantity of stitches, just remember that you need to have odd number on sides and uh, one fifths in the middle. Then one fifth in the middle, two fifths on one side, and two fifths on the, another side. That's how you count your stitches for the gusset. Now let's do it together, and I will show you everything in very detail. Then um, we will start knitting our eleven stitches from the side. You can have another number. Then I always slip my first stitch. That's how I have a nice, beautiful edge. And now I have my 11 stitches of the side. Let's count. It's always a good idea to count. And then six stitches of the middle. Five, six. And count from another side. Always good idea. And now we need to do uh, two stitches together leaning to the left it's slip slip uh, knit but as I am doing my stitches different way they they can be like this in this case you turn them slip slip and knit two together your stitches need to be leaning to the left and you do your decrease and next knit stitch now you turn your work and start working on the wrong side this way you need to uh, tie it your first stitch and i usually do it when i do second one look i do purl stitch and then i tie my yarn and then in this way i have very tight and nice two first stitches then i have two stitches and after this i will uh, purl my uh, six stitches on the middle yeah then that was two and one two three four five six here is my middle uh, stitches and here i need to do two together i purl two stitches together but you know because my stitch is already turned right way on the round right side your stitches need to be your, your decreases need to be symmetrical then if you look these stitches will, will look from center to the edge and from other side you you your decrease need to be opposite then it will be on the right side first decrease will be to the right and second to the left first will be knit two together and other one ssk then here on the wrong side we purl two together and we purl another one after this next stitch and now just count i have eight stitches 
you can have another uh, number of stitches but your stitches need to be now uh, even number you see i have eight you need to have the same even number and same number on other side if you have even numbers on sides after gap you're doing everything right you turn your work slip first stitch and start knitting you tight it and you knit till you have one stitch before the gap this gap a very obvious here you are one stitch before the gap and now you need to do another decrease left leaning decrease you knit both stitches together and you see your uh, stitch from the front is leaning to the left then you're doing right and then you knit another stitch and turn your work and then you continue working like this let me show you one more time on the, on the wrong side you're always working till one stitch before the gap and then you work one stitch before gap and another stitch after you just knit or purl them together and after this you purl another one and you always have uh, even number of stitches on both your sides now you continue with your gusset and i will come later to see what we do right we finish our gusset yours should look exactly the same now i have 18 stitches on top you can have uh, the same or other number of stitches and the side is looking like this here and now we will pick our stitches with the main color on the side of the heel heel is done and uh, uh, next step is to pick your stitches on the uh, both sides of the heel and I will show you this because it's very important and few people can do it and probably you never saw this beautiful way which guarantee you the best result for your heel and this is the contrasting heel because if you do the same color heel it will be different you will start on the other side but on this heel we are doing contrasting heel and our main color will start from the right side and let me show you what we will do here as you see i just left my uh, tail because i will hide it later and today i will just hold it because it's supposed to be inside of the uh, sock later but we will not touch it now let's observe our edge stitches you need to turn your work and find your edge stitches your edge stitches will look on your left hand side don't uh, don't use another stitch just turn it very well like this and observe your edge stitches like this uh, one edge stitch is every two rows and here you see don't don't use these stitches just turn it and see this edge stitches which looks on your to your left side and now you see each of these stitches have back loop and a front loop i hope you see well we will use front loops of these stitches all stitches will be the same except first and last one and this is very important to you for you to see because this part this corner is always the big problem and people can't avoid having the holes here then now i will show you how you do it you see your first stitch of the main color i hope you can see it well and you get it this stitch for the right loop like this from behind with your needle from behind through the right loop like this this will be your main color and then you take the the front loop of your contrasting color of stitch like this let me show you you get one and then you get this front loop by the back yeah you pull them up and you need to make a stitch out of this then you put your needle you take it out and put it back let me just uh, pull this tail and you need to put your needle opposite way like this inside of these two stitches you see let me show you again 
you get this first stitch like this and second stitch like this and then you turn and then you pull a new stitch out of these ones don't worry it's this old gymnastic is just just for the first stitch now you just will use your front loops of each stitch you see this white front loop from the previous stitch uh, let me see my my yarn is opening let me see this let me sort it out yeah here we go i just want to show you everything very closely for you to understand then when you go next you pick this white loop the contrasting color from front to the back and then next one the same way and just pull your yarn uh, between them and you have another stitch and then you continue on your right side this way because left side will be different then you put your needle inside of this stitch you just get out yeah and in the next one and you pick just uh, front loops of both of them and pull your yarn and continue like this you see pull them up don't don't be afraid you can pull them up and it will be easier for you to pick stitches i know this is the the worst part uh, to make socks but you will you will tell me thank you because you will have a perfect perfect picking side you see behind you have very nice and see thin uh, picking line and it will not disturb your feet when you're working with the socks then continue this way picking stitches and look how nice it is and no holes at all even in a corner you will see when you start working in the rounds it's a perfect way to do this i tried several ways but this one when i discover it i always use it now because this one is the best count your stitches in my case it will be 15 stitches i will continue working uh, in your case can be differently but uh, i will i will go up And here I am in the final. I have 14 stitches. I just want you to show uh, where you stop. Then my last stitch, let me show you. Here I am, I'm getting in. And my last stitch is just that one under your last stitch on the needle. And you pull your last stitch. I count here 15 stitches. You need to remember this number because you need to have the same number on other side here this yarn i can take and i continue with my main color now i just knit all stitches on the top like this and working work until the end now i will pull, pull my uh, needle because it will not be very comfortable for me to pick other side and this way we will now pick stitches from other side and it will be different way and i will show you now the way how you do it on the left side and it will be a little bit different because our edge stitches if you observe them they are looking opposite side yeah they are looking to the right and that's why we need to do our front loops different way and how we will do it first will be a little bit tricky enter in your stitch from front to back and second stitch from back to front like this and pull pull it up pull well and now you you need to have some i can't uh, a little cross between them you see first stitch will be a bit different difficult you see this little cross you pull your needle in and you need to create your first stitch it will be a little bit difficult sometimes i just take my second needle and help myself like this look you just 
put your needle in and make a first stitch. I know it's not easy, but it will guarantee that you will have perfect, perfect heel with no holes like. Then next one, again, the same way. One we just get out and another one. Next one, pull up and you see that little cross, little arch. I want you to see it very well. Pull up and you enter in this little cross like this and pull your stitch. And your stitches need to be very tight as well. Next one. I know without practice it's a little bit difficult, but I am a guarantee I guarantee you that result will worth it. I I can do it quite fast now, you see? Just continue like this. From front to back, back to front, and then go inside of the little arch. And this is the way to pick your stitches and they will be exactly the same as they are on the other side. Here I'm in, at the end and I just wanted to show you the last stitch which will be different the same way as the first stitch is different. Here I'm in the final. Now I will need to pick my contrasting color and the main color. And I will do it the same way I started on the other side. Look, I will pick my stitch from front to back and then my second stitch I will pick the same way. You see, my stitch of the main color, I get it from back through the left loop, you see, from front to back and front to back my main color this way. This is all, all details I am showing you to, for you to achieve the perfect result. Then you pull your needle and start continue, continue working in a round. Just pick your next stitch, pull it tight again the cable and continue working in stocking it stitch. I am using stocking it stitch. If you use some pattern, you continue with your pattern. And um, now I finish my second needle. I am back on um, my first needle where I have my heel. And as you see, we have more stitches here. And to come to the uh, original number of stitches, we need to create another gusset with uh, decreases. And we will follow the algorithm. It will be one round with decreases and one round plain with no decreases. And the round of decreases, we will do always the same way. And I will show you this way. We need first stitch on the side of the heel. And next we need to de decrease stitches leaning to the left. And it will be skip, slip, slip and knit. You see? Just will be two stitches together the same way we did uh, on a uh, heel. Then first decrease will be slip slip knit and then you knit all stitches uh, till three last stitches on your needle with a uh, heel. When you see your three stitches you do decrease to the right. You knit two stitches together like this and you knit last stitch and you continue working in rounds. Then you knit all stitches on the uh, second needle. And then next round you do just plain knitting, you knit all. And then you just uh, repeat these two rounds. One round with decreases, one right round without decreases. Let me show you again. You knit first, then SSK. And in the end you knit two together to the right and one stitch and then finish the round, another round with no decreases and continue like this till you come to the original number of stitches. In my case it's 28 stitches here and 28 stitches will be on other side and that's how you finish your heel and continue working with the foot and you will have the most beautiful and perfect heel ever. That's a uh, everything for today and I just wanted to show you another little life hack 
how I use my leftovers. Because in the beginning I was cutting them in two parts, but then I decided why I'm doing this. When I can use this leftover all till the last centimeter. This is very small leftover and uh, you can have a bigger one. Only thing, you need to have access to both ends of your uh, piece of yarn. Then as you see, I have one from uh, outside and one from inside. And I just work my both socks and in the end I just cut it in the middle and join with another leftover. Then you take your piece of yarn and take both ends and you join your end one uh, one uh, end from the out to one side one sock and another end from inside to another sock and you will work them like two rounds on one sock two rounds on another one and when you finish you come to the ends you just cut it in the middle and join another piece of yarn that's how you can use all your leftovers i hope you like this life hack and I will see you in my in the next videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Put like. I am doing my best for you. And I am very happy that you come and watch my videos and learning knitting, which is an amazing art. See you next videos.